Let's make a rough division of physics according to this graph uh, with speed on the horizontal axis and one over size on the vertical axis. So down in the left hand corner at slow speeds and large objects we have classical mechanics, things like uh, Newtonian mechanics, Lagrangian mechanics, forces, energy, uh, all of those classic things. At higher speeds we have special relativity but for still big objects. Up in the upper left hand corner though, at slow speeds and small sizes, we have quantum mechanics. Uh, and that's what we're going to be studying and talking about. Uh, in the upper right hand corner, at large speeds and small sizes, uh, we have the realm of quantum field theory, which we're not going to be talking about. Uh, so in this video, I want to talk about the postulates of quantum mechanics. The zeroth postulate of quantum mechanics is that you don't talk about quantum mechanics. Okay, but the first postulate of quantum mechanics is that a physical system is completely described by a wave function. And by completely, we mean everything about the system is described by the wave function. There's nothing hidden. We call that psi of x, y, z, and t. Uh, psi, by the way, is in general a complex function, uh, and so we're going to have to work with complex numbers. Postulate number two is that the absolute value of psi squared dx is the probability of finding a particle between x and x plus dx. What this means for us is that rho of x, a probability density function, is the absolute value of psi squared. So we've talked about probability densities before. Um, recall that there is a normalization condition, or here we'll call it a normalization corollary. The integral from negative infinity to infinity of psi squared integral dx must equal 1, which is that the probability to find the particle somewhere must add up to 1. OK, that kind of makes sense. Postulate number three is that when you make a measurement, measurements are real numbers. Um, and these measurements are described by objects that we're going to call Hermitian operators. And you know what? For the moment, we're not going to really talk about this. Um, so just kind of don't worry about this postulate right now. We'll talk about it later once we've done some more quantum mechanics. Postulate number four is that if you make a measurement of a particle, uh, say you make a measurement of position, then the wave function itself immediately changes. And we say it changes instantaneously. We also use the word collapse for this, though the wave function collapses. Uh, in particular, say you had a wave function that originally looked like this complicated looking wave function. You make a measurement. And then you find the particle at x naught. So after you make the measurement, the wave function will look something like this. It'll be a spike at x naught. Because you know the particle is at x naught. Because you just measured it to be at x naught. OK. So you really don't have to like this at this point. Um, and that doesn't really matter. Uh, but at this point, you do at least need to live with it. Uh, we can argue about it later, um, but you just need to live with this for right now. Postulate number five tells us that the wave function, let's just look at x and t, obeys the Schrodinger equation. So this is the famous Schrodinger's equation. So i h bar partial psi partial t is minus h bar squared over 2m. The second derivative of psi with respect to x plus v of x psi of x. v of x is called the potential, and it describes the specifics of whatever situation you're in. Um, so in a moral sense, it's kind of like the Schrodinger's equation is telling you the energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And so v of x is like the potential energy for your system. By the way, uh, Schrodinger's equation is a PDE, so we're going to have to use techniques necessary for solving PDEs. Let's talk about some things that you can observe with wave functions. 
um, and the idea of observables. We're going to call observables also expectation values. By the way, note that the absolute value psi of x squared is psi star times psi, where psi star is the complex conjugate. So keep that in mind. Let's first talk about the observable of position. So we're going to write that as bracket x, and that's defined as the integral from negative infinity to infinity, psi star times x times psi dx. Notice how the x is sandwiched in between the psi star and the psi inside of the integral. This is going to be a general rule for expectation values. We can rewrite this as the expectation value of x is x times the absolute value of psi squared dx, and then the integral over that. Um, by the way, we also have the expectation value of x squared, which is exactly what you'd expect. Instead of putting x, you put x squared sandwiched in between psi star and psi. Momentum, we can observe momentum at expectation value of p. And the rule is we're going to write that as psi star times minus i h bar partial partial x psi dx. So the derivative is acting on the psi of x. Um, we call this the momentum operator. And we denote that usually by a p hat. And the momentum operator p hat is minus i h bar partial partial x. Uh, why are we doing this? Why do we write it as some kind of derivative? Well, it turns out we're doing this so that the expectation value of p is m times d by dt of the expectation value of x. Namely, that momentum is what you think it is for uh, measurements that you make. Uh, see a derivation in another video for that. We could also talk about kinetic energy. Uh, recall, we would usually write kinetic energy as 1 half mv squared. It's more traditional to write that in terms of momentum, p squared over 2m, so that the expectation value of the kinetic energy is, again, the integral, psi star, now times, and we put in the momentum operator p, and we get minus h bar squared over 2m, the second derivative with respect to x, psi dx. Notice that this quantity here is just what I was calling kinetic energy uh, in my expression above from the Schrodinger's equation. Uh, a couple more things. It's traditional to talk about the variances, also standard deviations. Um, so the variance in x is the uh, expectation value of x squared minus the square of the expectation value of x, and then something similar for momentum. And then we can combine these in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Uh, and we're just going to state it here. It says that the standard deviation in x times the standard deviation in momentum is greater than h bar over 2. Again, a proof is going to be coming later in the course for this, uh, for where this comes from. At the moment, we're just going to take it as a given. OK, so those are some of the main postulates of quantum mechanics. Uh, and now we'll start getting into some of the details.